For as long as there have been electric cars and solar panels, it's been the dream of many an inventor, engineer or business person to bring an electric car to market that does not require plugging in. A car that, to all intents and purposes, runs solely on sunshine. Technically, some electric cars already achieve that by recharging their battery packs from the solar power generated by the photovoltaic solar panels on the roof of their owner's home. But save for a small proportion of EV enthusiasts and home builders, the majority of electric cars out there today are not covered in solar panels large enough to generate enough power to never require plugging in. The reasons for this, as I detailed in a video last month that you can watch here, are pretty simple. Photovoltaic solar panels aren't all that energy efficient. Even the best solar cells on the market today manage efficiencies of 22 or 23 percent, meaning there's simply not enough surface area on your average car to generate the power needed to run the car on solar power alone. While there are times when solar panels might make sense, like the small, low-speed A-car utility vehicle that's designed to be built and sold in parts of Africa where mains electricity is still not a certainty and where most people don't own a car, let alone travel very far, it's usually better to put solar panels on the place you live and call it quits. Of course, if you don't own your home or you can't put panels on it, that's different. And it's one of the reasons that the Sono Scion has photovoltaic panels on its body more Europeans rent than buy. But even the Sonosign, with all of those solar panels on board, still doesn't really add much range per day in ideal situations. Yet there's one company that's been quietly working on a brand new electric car that it claims will seat five, have great performance and range, and also have enough solar panels on its roof that you'll be able to drive from Amsterdam to Innsbruck in winter with only one recharging stop en route. And by 2035, it says it hopes to have made it possible for the world to have driven an entire light year on solar power. That's about 5.88 trillion miles, if you were curious. Enter Lightyear, and it's aptly named Lightyear One. The company has been in the news a little this week after holding its first official press conference and announcing a partnership with leasing company Leaseplan Netherlands to make it easier for people to drive one. It's promising to have prototypes in testing next year and enter into production in 2020, which is a change to its original plans to have cars on the road in customer hands by next year. But hey, that's hardly new in the electric car world, eh? Except one thing. While there's plenty of videos from the company and quite a lot of teaser images, nobody outside of the company seems to have seen the Lightyear one in the flesh. There certainly aren't any photos or videos I can find, and the technical specs seem strangely absent. So what do we know about Lightyear, Lightyear one, and its promise to indirectly emit four times less carbon dioxide than a Tesla. Well, first, we should deal with some history behind the company. Founded by five of the 20 or so Eindhoven University of Tech alumni responsible for the incredible Stella and Stella Lux four-seat solar team cars, there's certainly no lack of talent at the company. The history behind that company gives some hint that Lightyear's claims about the Lightyear one could be true. Stellar Lux, for example, was a positive energy car, meaning it generated more energy than it used and it drove 1,500 kilometers, that's 932 miles, using just a single charge of its battery pack and whatever power it could harvest from the sun during the World Solar Challenge in Australia in 2015. While that team of students have now graduated, I should note that the university solar team is still in existence and solar team Eindhoven are still engineering better and better solar cars and they aim to enter into the 2019 World Solar Challenge too. In short, then, if there's any one company that can have the claim to the technical prowess to make this car an actual reality, it's Lightyear. As to the car, from the teaser images we've seen, it's a long svelte hatchback with a super aerodynamic shape that the company says will really help its energy efficiency. It also claims to be super lightweight, another factor that will dramatically improve energy efficiency and therefore range. There are spats too on the rear wheels, like those on the EV1 or original Honda Insight, and I'd guess pretty narrow wheels by modern automotive standards. And while it's not entirely clear from the teaser images, I think there's an aerodynamic tunnel down the center of the car, like the Stella and the Stella Lux, designed to reduce the car's frontal area and allow air to pass around the car more easily. The interior details of the car, its battery and drivetrain remains something of a mystery. But we do know that the Lightyear One will have all-wheel drive capabilities courtesy of a quartet of in-wheel motors designed for energy efficiency 
and decent performance. We also know that the battery pack is going to have to be large enough to manage the kind of ranges promised by Lightyear. But on that front, I should note that the trips highlighted by Lightyear on its website as being possible in the Lightyear 1 with no or minimal charging stops mostly don't say how far you'd be able to travel each day on trips that are, for the most part, a couple of weeks long. That said, when I plugged my annual mileage into Lightyear's calculator, it said that if I spread my 15,000 miles, that's 24,000 kilometres, of average annual driving out evenly over the year here in Portland, I'd be able to power 45% of my year just by the solar panels on the roof of the Lightyear 1. That's pretty darned impressive, and again, using the history of those who started the company, doesn't seem as far-fetched as some other claims I've heard in the past. But still, without an actual peek at the car yet, it's hard to say. The last thing we know, price. The Lightyear One currently has a total of 77 orders, 57 of which are private buyers. The remaining 20 will be purchased by Lease Plan Netherlands and leased to customers for €1,949 a month. That's equivalent to US dollars a month, or if you prefer, more than twice the median monthly mortgage payment in the US. So there you have it. That's what we currently know about the Lightyear One. It's an enigmatic car produced by a world-leading team of engineers. It's a car we've not seen yet, but which now has a factory, 100 or so employees, and is promising great things in just a year's time. Oh, and it's more expensive than most of us could ever expect to pay. Will it drive on light and achieve the dream? Maybe. But for now, I think this is probably a rich person's plaything. That's it. Thanks for watching. Let us know if you liked it or didn't like it below. Scribble a comment if you fancy it. And if you want to support the show, well, there's a whole host of links just below to help you do that. I'll be back soon with another episode. But until then, keep evolving.